Jamin here. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the content I produce. I want to give a big shout out to all of my Patreon supporters for financially contributing to this channel. I love watching content that has really good quality, but I also like making my content have really good quality. And so you guys are making it super easy for me to invest in really nice microphones, a new fancy chair that you guys never see, and all this great lighting back there. And uh, just the time it takes to edit these videos, uh, it's amazing. So I, I appreciate your support in making this happen. And if you feel led to support this channel, go ahead and do that. Check out the Patreon in the description below. You can also become a member of Street Smart Swing. Did you know that? I've got a ton of content uh, that you can have access to, uh, including my method of breaking down Lindy Hop, how that works, and weekly content that I upload to the website. So check that out in the link also. Now, I'm excited. I've got so many videos to look at today, and I wanna give you guys my thoughts on one I just noticed. It's PSSF. 2022 it looks like it's a uh, Prague swing festival it's a jack and jill prelims it says heat three and i noticed there were a lot of views on this heat three more more so than the finals so that always piques my interest to see uh what are people looking at and i want to check it out and give you guys my thoughts on who i think is the winner of this competition now what's interesting is i don't know the level it doesn't really say if it's an intermediate, advanced or not. I could be missing something, but uh, I don't know. So my paradigm for grading this level will depend on the dancer's ability as a whole. Of course, you all uh, know many of my prerequisites that I look for. Uh, control and timing and creativity. Those are the primary things I look for in that first place winner. So let's see exactly which one of these couples are my favorite. So... I'll give you guys my opinion right after this. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six couples. Let's see, it might be more than that. Yeah, more couples than that. All right. Okay, so, so far I can tell the level looks pretty advanced. Uh, just upon my initial thought. Yeah, there's, this is going to be interesting. I feel like there's a lot of uh, control so far that these dancers have. It looks to, it seems like the followers and the leaders are pretty even on talent. It's quite weird how that works out because sometimes you'll have where the followers as a whole are more advanced than the leaders that are leading them. And uh, sometimes it's the other way around. And it looks uh, looks pretty even. It's pretty even this time. Ah oh, man, who do I like? Who do I like? Okay, uh, my initial thought: number twenty-one and twenty-nine are uh, really standing out to me. I also like uh, twenty-five and uh, let's see. This couple, he's literally right in front of me. Black shirt, gray pants. She's got um, beautiful, like, black black and white dress with red band. Really like them. But I also like, there's a couple on the, the side here. You really can't see too much of them. She's wearing all black. Uh, 28. She's my favorite follower. She's number 28, looks like. And uh, the leader was 24. He's kind of taller. So let's. I want to see more of them. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now, when the tempo slows down like this, you can see a lot more in terms of the dancer's technical ability. Now, it looks like everybody can pretty much do the technique uh, without causing pain with their partners. And that's primarily for the leader side. I'm also looking at the follower side, too, to see if there are just some fundamental things in place there. You know, not taking really big steps, staying really on a line. Um, th those are the primary ones I'm looking for in these types of competitions. And so far, at this slower tempo, I'm a little surprised by what I'm seeing. I feel the leader again, the one with the black shirt, gray pants. He looks like he's number 20. He's in the back now by the band. Yeah, number 29. 
This leader looks to be my favorite. The followers he's dancing with, she has the pink dress on. I think they're looking good. I think uh, there's a little bit more control and restraint. And I don't feel like I the, the music has been lost. I feel at this tempo, many dancers kind of forget the rhythm aspect of their dancing. And they kind of focus more on the shapes, you know, moving around with their partner. And we, we kind of lose the essence of entertaining the audience with what we're actually hearing. So yeah, so far that's my favorite leader, my favorite follower. Let's take a look here in this one. I think uh, I'm really liking the follower. She's got the pink shirt on, the blue skirt, and um, really just kind of self-contained, a little bit of style here and there, but I don't really see those fundamental things missing in her dancing. So. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, now they're together. Okay, so my favorite couple so far now looks to be the, the couple, the two dancers that I liked in the last one. So number 22 and number 29 is who I liked before. Tempo's a little faster. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so tempo's picked up a little bit. Uh, the couple that I like, I can't really see them too much in the view. And yeah, pretty good, pretty good, a lot of control. Now I think it's an artistic choice by the leader not to really uh, demonstrate the energy of the music. There's nothing wrong with that, but when you're doing a competition, it, it usually helps to be noticed and to get respect to show what people are actually listening to. Uh, regardless of how well we can like do the technique it, it is just weird how people are fickle you know sometimes I look past all of that and just look at what people can do with the technique um, and just kind of respect their own artistic choices but in this case it's kind of tough but we're talking about who goes to the finals from here in most traditional sessions and um, yeah this was this is pretty interesting so far I will say um, in this heat, it, they, it seems like everybody's a little crowded, and I see a little less control. But, again, even with that being said, uh, my favorite leader and follower are in the corner, 29 and 22. And I gotta give a shout-out to my second favorite. Uh, again, the leader, he's actually he's right in front of me now. Look at that. Uh, he's got number 24 also. He's got... Uh, Overalls, tan shirt, tan pants. He's my second favorite leader. And my follower is also the one that was in the back with the black. I actually liked her in the other one too. Let's talk about this. That was really fun. Um, big congratulations to every person that went out there and competed. I know a lot of times it might seem easy to you uh, the more you go out there and social dance to throw yourself in front of a crazy audience and be judged. But for a lot of you, I know this might be kind of a new thing and you might feel a little bit of the anxiety uh, of not being able to win a certain position or, um, you know, get advanced to the next level in a competition. And I know that can be stressful. I know it can be stressful, but you got to recognize that this entire thing is a process. This thing I talk about is your journey in mastering social dancing. I remember vividly being in the same position as many of you and you know not being able to get to the next level in a competition and wondering what the heck is going on and you know what's subjective what's objective and in hindsight when i think about that really tumultuous time it was really frustrating for for myself and i know for many of you i remember going to some of the judges that i really respected dancers that could actually do the things that i aspired to want to learn and so i wanted their opinion I really did. And so I would ask them uh, respectfully, you know, what, what can I do to get better in my dancing? I didn't come at them with a nasty attitude. I didn't come at them with demands. It was just a humble attitude, just saying, what can I do to get better? And what I found out is, you know, I had to listen. I wasn't a good listener at the time. But what I did hear, you know, in hindsight, a lot of the things that they would tell me wasn't really objective things. Not, you know, don't hurt your partner as you're moving. <laughs> this is what a swing out looks like. This is a tuck turn. You need to learn those things. 
It wasn't any of that. It had to do with those more subjective qualities that either were just their opinion or they were those subjective qualities that enhance the way the dance looks as a whole. And so many of you all are going to be caught in that situation where you're just kind of trying to figure out, is this an objective thing? Is this a subjective thing? Most of it is subjective. Let me just put it out there. Most of it is subjective. And if it is subjective, it has to do with styling. And usually with styling uh, and, and the control of the technique so that it looks like you're, um, you, you both are moving with intentionality. That just means practice. Pol rough, polish off the rough edges. It takes some time to do that. But keep in mind, again, most of those things are subjective. And I know we're human beings, and it's hard to hear that. Sometimes we want that affirmation from others to tell us we're good and we're not good in areas that we need to work. But keep in mind, you're in control of the driver's seat whenever it comes to style and polishing the thing that you can already do technically. So just be encouraged, guys. It takes time to get good at this. Um, and the more you actually practice it and apply good wisdom, good insight from others who actually care about uh, your process, uh, you'll just improve. It just happens. It just happens. And so the, the couple for me that really demonstrated the the aspect of dance that I felt was missing from the majority of these dancers is this couple right here. I mentioned them earlier. He had a black shirt on. She had a pink shirt on, right? They're in the corner. They're kind of being humble and chilling in the corner. And as you can tell, even in this video footage right here, look how much everybody else is moving compared to them. And you can even look at some of the judges looking over there because they can see the contrast. And I honestly think that the contrast is good so you can stand out. But I also would, would criticize them in the sense that the tone of the music is much more energetic. And, you know, it isn't just about the technique and the control of it all. The audience is watching. They want to be inspired. So I feel these dancers are far more superior than everybody else, technically. But I think um, even in their artistic choice, it might just be a little, some of would say boring or it's a, it's a little lazy, you know, doing a lot of Balboa rhythm. But for me, even with their artistic choice that I do not prefer, I still appreciate the control part. And that will tell you a lot, guys, when there are a lot of people in the competition who have the shapes, they can, they have some creativity, they've got some good timing with the music, and they don't have the polish. They do not have that control of their own body that makes the entire unit between the lead and the follower work together more smoothly. Something about it falls apart. And I think this couple had the, the quality that I'm looking for where the lead was confident in himself, the follower was confident in herself, and regardless of what the leader decided to choose in terms of the artistic way of moving, leading different shapes or doing Balboa, the follower didn't try to you know, change that. She just went with the flow and they worked together as a unit. And I appreciate that, I really do. And I think for me, they were my favorite couple. Uh, I might have to check out the final to see if they made it in the finals or not, but I definitely want to see what happened. So uh, stay tuned for that video. That should be pretty fun. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this video. Who was your favorite? Who do you think should have been my favorite and why? Let me know in the comment section below. I love being able to put my ideas out here for you guys and you know talk about a lot of the things that you guys are already talking about in private, but very few professionals actually talk about in the open. So I love doing that. So join in on the conversation. Don't forget, guys, if you want to become a Street Smart Swing member, you can do that. Check out the link in the description. You get so many great benefits. It's a brand new website I got to make this entire process easier. I'm going to be doing some live chats. I'm going to do some Q&As, uh, some weekly uh, coaching for you guys and review some of your own footage. I'm excited about doing that. But more importantly, I give you guys access to the Lindy Hop Blueprint. This is pretty much a course that I've been working on for a long time to show someone how to go from the very beginning to the very end in the, in the swing dance process to understand how it works. So I put all that together in a course, you get access to that, but you also get access to my journey. Like I like putting my stuff out there for you guys. So if you you know, wanna get new inspirational classes, new inspirational moves each week, I post it up there for you guys. You will get access to that for joining our community. So check that out in the description below. And again, guys, let me know who you thought was the winner of this competition. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.